Alright. Welcome to my vlog. Welcome to my vlog. Felix's vlog. Welcome to Felix's vlog. Welcome to my vlog. Um, hello. I'm Felix Bernstein, YouTube uh, professor and scholar and uh, commentator and vlogger. Um. 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 Uh, first of all, I'm having terrible migraines. I think I said that already, but besides that, and this is awful, I'm on Excedrin, um, which has caffeine in it. Uh, I'm feeling a burst of energy, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna vlog. A lot of people, uh, when they are ill, um, they start to vlog, or they start to blog, or they start to mlog in any form, which is just media logging. Uh, uh, before I used the video uh, format, I was keeping logs, as in written records, of my logs, uh, because I'm also having terrible diarrhea. Last night I had a, some, a little bit of, of diarrhea um, come out um, in my stool, but just a little. And I'm mostly feeling better because of the Excedrin, and because of the headache relief from the aspirin, and because I talk to my therapist every day. What? I thought to distract myself and maybe to distract you, we could find some relief, we could find some solace if we get together and we just start talking. You know, because I think opening up and dialoguing is so crucial right now at a time when so many people are closed off. And the internet is really the place to bridge the gaps, although I have a lot to say about the internet. I have a lot to say about it. You know, this is not very topical. In fact, I'm a little bit behind because I I'm a little bit behind. I'm sorry. I'm not Jon Stewart. I'm not any of these people that can keep you really up to date because I'm, you know, a little behind. Uh, and I don't really read very much. So, therefore, my knowledge is limited. But I do hear some things. Tracy Morgan. I agree with everything that he said about gay people. But I don't agree that you should kill your son. But I do agree with this. Being gay is learned from the media. The media teaches you how to be gay. And, in terms of gay bullying, you should stop complaining and fight back. Stop whining. I completely agree with you, Tracy Morgan. It's a blessing to hear someone say that um, in the black community, which is typically homophobic. And I don't find those remarks homophobic. I find them uh, homo... Um, homo... Dissolving. Homo dissolving. Uh, now it's time for a little Madonna update. Um, you know, her last album and uh, the Sticky and Sweet tour, her last album, Hard Candy, she totally, um, you know, gave herself up to record producers and sort of created a robotic version of her original voice when she came out with her, her original youth. She sort of repackaged and fundamentally reworked and created her youth. Um, in American Life, that album, it was very clear that she'd become sort of a, you know, the way Hollywood liberals are all very disconnected. She'd become like them, uh, and that whole album was so such a travesty, although I think it was a great album, because um, she can do no wrong. Uh, she's since then really tried to cover it up with Confessions on a Dance Floor, which was, I think, her most aestheticized sound, her most, you know, richly, you know, considered sound. Um, and then the next one, Hard Candy, which was just a very warped, um, sounds very auto-tuned, very boring sound, um, very robotic, which, you know, that's the way a lot of people sound right now. Um, I don't think it had the sort of booming edge that, like, a sort of Rihanna has or Lady Gaga has, that booming, you know, we're blasting through a megaphone edge that's sort of just the pounding bass that sort of, that you can just get drunk and, like, you know, just fuck you up and just, you know, forget everything going on in the world. You know, she doesn't have that edge, and um, I would love to see uh, what she does on the next album if she picks up on that, because what she's good at doing is usually finding things and just taking them. I think what she's doing by, you know, launching herself um, in this beautiful dress and launching herself um, with, as, a, as a movie um, director, film director, she's quite interested in various auteurs, and she's very, um, you know, it's a very fancy taste. It's kind of like similar to her writing her children's books and, you know, having her different um, rich lady British, you know, pseudo-British hobby. You know, she goes and has this, you know, life where she's riding horses and she's directing movies. Um, meanwhile, you know, she's doing the Sticky and Sweet tour. You know, she's really, you know, she's fully moving through um, every possible sort of, you know, cliche and sexual position. Consider... Um, that each sort of cliché role that she fills is a different dance position and you'll realize how flexible 
she is in a sort of psycho physical you know spiritual way she can she can bend herself to fit any sound you know with her singing she was never a great singer she was a dancer with sound she could she could bend herself into different sounds and that's really quite special uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about whatever I want to now. That's the next segment. Uh, Celia Pierce argues in Beyond Shoot Your Friends that the outstandingly popular shoot 'em up games, shoot 'em up games, shoot 'em up games are um, really built to appeal to the worst aspects of male adolescence. Uh, see the quote. You know. Versus the the games for females, which um, promote va that promote um, cooperation, uh, qualitative value, community building, empathy, you know, storylines that, that matter. You know, those are sort of thrown to the wayside for the shoot 'em up game. Now she'll argue also that the remote control is a kind of shoot 'em up toy that you you use to shoot up the television. Now I'm arguing new point that uh, the clicking uh, with the mouse, the mouse, the mouse, the mouse. The mouse is a kind of a gun, and we use it to click our media, to keep our media in check. Uh, but meanwhile, there's this defensive paranoia. Um, what if what if the machine strikes back? Uh, what if the woman gets too close? You know, what if we can't change the channel fast enough? Uh, what if there's too many pop-ups? What if we can't block them all? You know, what if we can't get to the next video fast enough? YouTube, YouPorn, Xtube, uh, Vimeo, all of these web-sharing video sites. They're essentially uh, shoot 'em up games, in which the video is what we shoot. Let's finish this video. Let's get to the next one. YouTube is a kind of game that you can never win. What you do is you're thrown a, a ton of videos, you can't watch them all, and you just watch as many as you can. It's like Tetris. You do as much as you can, um, and then tomorrow you come back and watch more. Um, and uh, the final victory on a porn site uh, is when you actually shoot your load. So. Facebook is also a shoot 'em up game. Uh, Facebook's game is where you sort of stalk your friends to death, but you can never fully get rid of the person that you're stalking. Um, and meanwhile, you're also limited by the filter bubble. Uh, the filter bubble means that you only get notified about the most notified about links, you only read the most read links, you only view the most liked videos. When it comes to these view porn sites or YouTube, you only watch the most watched videos, you only masturbate to the most masturbated to videos. Um, uh, you only befriend the most befriended friend. You engage in a, this 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 vote pop this vote pop popularity contest. Except it's on a micro scale, so that it's your popularity contest. It's not some large popularity contest where there's a popular group. No, you're always the popular group, and what you like is always the popular group, and everything else becomes a free group. Everything else is removed because it's so decentralized that we're all the center. Uh, you know. So, on the one hand, you're this meaningless visitor X, you're this meaningless drone, you're this meaningless number, you're this meaningless variable. On the other hand, the site claims that it's all for you, that they're doing everything for you, it's all happening for you, you're the center of the experience. Please. Now, YouTube and Facebook, they, they always have this sort of positive presentation of events, whether it's your profile or it's the 10 minute video that you're watching um, that is endlessly clickable. You can endlessly go through the pictures, you can endlessly fast forward, you can endlessly skip over something. Uh, but what basically can happen is you can't stop, you can't die, there's no death. Facebook will indefinitely keep your profile up, YouTube will indefinitely keep um, the video going. You can't, you can't rest. We have to sort of come up with new uh, rules for these sites that are less boring, that are, that are more meaningful, that are less universal. The game is just the process of zoning out into the process of this perfect, almighty flow of meaningless data and information that really is just masking uh, an addicting void of apathy. What, 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 what is gone and what must be restored are the feminine characteristics that the shoot 'em up game has sort of uh, obliterated. Community, you know, qualitative value, not just quantitative values. Empathy, self-awareness, protected privacy, imaginative romance, realistic love, physical contact, physical care, whimsy, you know, spaciousness, you know, home. Uh, uh. The more 
we try and, you know, take our original peculiarity, which we all have, and sort of try and milk it for all this attention and profit, um, the more that we're losing ourselves to a virtual, immortal, transcendental Facebook self, uh, living in an impossible and limited virtual reality that I call the Worldwide Queer. When we come out of the closet, we make it a very special event. We bring something to the surface that was already very obviously on the surface. I'm here. Well, where else would you be? Would you be over there? Of course you're here. It's time we came out as conflicted and confused, as dependent and vulnerable. Why instead do we come out as gay? Why instead do we come out as queer? You know, tags which superficially celebrate surmounting binary oppositions, finding identities, finding ourselves. Besides, gay doesn't even have to do with the specific historical event of the formation of the homosexual identity. It doesn't have to do with a stonewall. It doesn't have to do with Harvey Milk. It has to do with the fun, happy pride parade that occurred afterwards and was sponsored by Mark Jacobs. Nonetheless, we continue to use this archaic identity, gay, 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 as a means of martyrdom, suffering, and pleasure, just as we continue to identify with and against vulnerability. We, we, just as we identify with and against the bodies of the twinkish bottoms that we fuck, of the boys that we molest, of the women that we impersonate, we're only weak and ill when it's luxurious, when it's fun. In our campaign for equal rights, we let straight men know that we only pretend to be weak little boys. We're actually just as entitled and strong as straight men. We just play like little girls, like little sissies, for fun, for a tickle. All of a sudden, being gay has gone from a sinful illness and crime to a forgivable fetish that gets better with time as people get used to it. Ladies and gentlemen, we can be more honest with ourselves. We ought to break through denial, through the longing for an illusory star identity. so that we can confront and accept ourselves as we really are. Only then can fantasy and ritual be a site of seduction, passion, and play, where the self is truly recognized, loved, and never abandoned or betrayed. Dorian Carey, Paris is Burning.